Welcome to PowerCat Live. I'm here with my fellow PowerCat, Nikita Polikov. Hi, Nikita. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing so, very good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're here. So you are starting up a new team on PowerCat that's focused on Power Apps portals. Before we get into portals, talk a little bit about how you got into this role and your path through Microsoft and before. Yeah, so I was a, I was in a partner channel building um, professional web applications early in my career, then moved over to our Dynamics product uh, and delivered mm -hmm. a bunch of solutions for our customers on that. And that's how I joined Microsoft through our Dynamic Fast Track from X365 team. Right. And I spent five years helping our enterprise customers be successful and always had a, had a chance to help out fellow um, first customers and partners with their portal questions. And now we have a portal team within the CAT team dedicated to the success of our portal customers. So really excited about that. So talk about portals, Power Apps portals, right? They're part of the overall Power Platform, but they're not Power Apps. How are they different? How should we think about them? That's a great question. A very common one when I bring out portals, because the name says Power Apps portals. Now, it is part of the Power Platform. It is an application that you're building, but it's actually very different than a Power App, like a Canvas app that you're building. The Power Apps are designed to be used by users who are within your tenant, right? They're secure and protected. It's one of our promises for you in the Power Platform. Now, when you want to extend that application externally to your customers or vendors, you could be using guest access, but that requires your IT organization to onboard those users into your tenant. There really isn't right. self-service onboarding or a smooth experience for it or an ability for you to kind of even stand up a homepage or an introduction of self-registration experience. Portal's actually will allow you to do all of that. But there are their own applications. You'll see in the demo how it's different. And how have you seen enterprises using this feature? Now, a lot of our enterprises, especially those that are using Dynamics 365, have a great set of templates to start with, like customer self-service template, one of our most popular templates in that ecosystem, from partner template, marketing event pages, mm -hmm. and so forth. But our Power Platform customers have been really dramatically using the Power App portals within the last year, right? With COVID-19, we have organizations that have been transforming return to school solutions or vaccine registration website. In fact, those are one of our most highly trafficked uh, website today with incredible citizen demand and loads. We're very happy to be able to scale to those needs and allow those organizations to meet their challenges of being able to, to have an application that is externally facing, be able to rapidly deliver it and for it to be scaled to their citizens' needs. Yeah, that's a really good point, right? It's the ability to turn on a website that can scale so so high with just a click of a button is, is a huge advantage. So can you show us what Power Apps Portals is? I'm glad you asked, Phil. So we're gonna start here in our Power Platform studio, just like where you would create other Power Apps today. And you're gonna see the Portal from Black experience. We're gonna go there. And the reason why you wanna set this up is because you wanna name the app. We're gonna say, let's say it's Portal for PowerCat Live. And we're gonna give it a URL. And it checks that it's unique. Now, this is important because the moment you actually deploy the portal, it's live. Now, I've set up this portal to cater to a use case of a device supplier that works with Contoso, our most famous customer of all. And they're gonna go in and- Contoso products. <laughs> well, you built that device order app, remember from app in a day? In that app in a day, we've had folks order, order laptops and management yeah. approve the laptops. This is the part of the experience where we kind of said, well, let's go and provide a supplier portal experience for somebody to go and look at these device orders. Now, in these device orders, I can see that I see a couple laptops here that don't have a ship date yet. So I'm going to take this laptop and I'm ready to send it. Yeah, you know, okay, this person <laughs> really needs it. Um, I can contact the approver if I see something is weird, but let's just say I've ordered it and we're going to be really awesome. Let's get it shipped out on Monday uh, and submit it. And this updated the data. So now I've extended that business process out to my supplier. Now this, this data is coming from where? Like, is it connecting to another data source like with connectors? So this data is actually sitting live right in Power Apps in the Dataverse. So if I go to Dataverse, I see this data here live. So in fact, that data change that I just made is immediately reflected in uh, the behind the scenes for me in Dataverse in real time. So I can use my Power Apps again to manage it or Power Automate to do more interesting things with it as my business process uh, needs are everything that you normally use in Dataverse. Absolutely. And I assume then given that this is business data that you're showing, you're, you're signed in here? 
I am signed in as Nikita supplier. So if I sign out, what I've done is actually protect this device orders page to not be visible unless I'm signed out. So I see here I can sign in through Azure AD. What you know, that's that's my company. What are, what am I? Do I have other options in case I want to have them sign in through another organization or another identity? So Phil, that's a common question that most folks even start it with. I have Contoso ID to manage my partners or customers. Can you use that? And I say, I don't really know what Contoso ID is, but we do work identity costs. So whether it's OpenID or SAML, we've got great documentation to let you figure that out. And we likely work with all of the identity providers out there. I've seen some organizations even like use Gmail and Facebook and these external logins. It's like, it's very broadly supported. And absolutely, and Power App Portal's out of the box supports, you know, LinkedIn and all of those other social accounts as well. And our identity provider of choice is actually Azure Active Directory Business Consumer, which has a, a team dedicated on our identity, external identity product. Um, and they'll be there to support a lot of wealth of, of capabilities in that sense. Now, do you want to see how I've built this? Yeah, how did you build that? We said that this data is steering Dataverse which means that I can go and actually modify um, and, and show this data in the portal. Now, the portal itself has its own studio experience. So in our Power Apps, when I went and editing this portal application, I can have you know, my pages here and I see all of my experiences. I can go and actually modify the content here. So if it's Contoso Supplier Portal, maybe this is, needs to be you know, Device Supplier Portal. And as I make these changes, I can save them and sync them and they're immediately available for me online. It's very low code. Yeah, and more interesting piece of that page is actually this, this list form. This list form, we went and added a listing component to our page, and we went from the device order table in Dataverse. We selected a view of active device orders. Mm. For the actual view experience, we've shown the device order form. Now, we've selected, again, right from Power Platform, right? We're reusing. We went and actually selected those tables, views, and forms that you would have in Dataverse. So we really were using a lot of that experience uh, for you as a Power Apps maker. So you'll be right at home and really be able to build these applications really quickly. Yeah, amazing. Now, this all of this configuration actually sits in Dataverse itself. So if you needed to do more advanced customizations, we have this portal management application that's also deployed when you install the portal. And it's actually a model-driven app that is editing the data that defines your portal. In fact, the portal is entirely sitting here in data. So if you needed to work with JavaScript or code or maybe do a little bit more, more advanced customization, you'll be able to do this in portal management experience. Now, we're focused on bringing more of this into the Portal Studio so you don't have to go into these experiences over time. We'll bring that back into the Portal Studio so you don't have to switch applications. Now, we know developers, when I said JavaScript or CSS files, you know, you're going to need a Fusion team to really create awesome portals if you needed to write custom code. And those developers usually prefer tools of choice like Visual Studio Code. And we're happy to announce that we just released a public preview of a CLI component for Power Apps that now includes PA portal uh, command. So you can go and actually download this data representation of this portal into the file format so you can work in familiar tools like Visual Studio Code to modify your style sheet, be able to make changes, participate in modern ALM pipelines, and then check this code back in um, and push these changes back into the portal in the cloud and participate in the Fusion team experience. That's fascinating. There's a lot of capability there already available and the ability to turn on a website, just have it scale automatically the way you, some of those earlier examples you described. What's coming next? Exactly. So what's coming next, we're gonna make it easier for you to build these applications. We're gonna add more features to the Portal Studio to make it faster and simpler for you to build. We're gonna continue advancing and, and maturing uh, all of our uh, pro developer tools out of public preview into the general available capability. And you've included some links below that are in the description. Besides those, what should people do if they want to start exploring portals? So anybody can deploy a portal. In fact, if you can create an environment with Dataverse, you can add a portal to it. So you can get started today. We have a great Microsoft Learn course available. And if you've seen an app in a day, I'm building a portal in a day for you. So, Phil, we're going to have something for, for folks that want to learn portals and get hands-on lab in building a device order supplier portal this summer. Gimme. That's I'm great. I'm really excited about that. I can't wait for you uh, to share that with you and uh, and have more folks experience portals. But you can get started today with a provider.
Share with me in particular. I mean, you should share with a lot of people, though, not just me. <laughs> it's going to be public. <laughs> Thanks, Nikita, for taking the time. It was great to see uh, portals up, up close and uh, all the things that are coming as well. Thanks for having me, Phil.